Hey everyone, and welcome to my new tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use DaVinci Resolve to edit videos, and we will be covering basics of the user interface. Please note that this tutorial is intended for beginners, but there might be something for advanced users as well. And without further ado, let's go. This is the first window that we see once we open the DaVinci Resolve. This is called Project Manager. This whole window is pretty straightforward. We can export, import projects. We can see on the top left, we have local network and cloud. This is where we can store projects. Also on the right side, we have a few options here as well. We can create a new folder if we want to group projects, if we want to make the thumbnail smaller or, lar or larger. We can sort it by name, date modified, timelines, format, frame rate. And we can also change the view. For example, if we have a lot of projects here, we can change it to the list view. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. I'm going to name this tutorial. And I will click on create. And the first thing I like to do once I've opened the DaVinci Resolve is to go to the workspace and put it into full screen window. Now we notice this white bar on top. I really don't like to see it when I'm working on my projects, so that's why I put it in the full screen. As you can see, it's gonna disappear and it's gonna give us more room to work in. Now on the bottom right of our screen, we can see this wheel. This stands for project settings. We will click on it, and this is where we can define our video resolution and frame rate. For example, here, timeline resolution, it says 1920 by 1080 HD. You can change it to whichever one you like, but let's say you're creating a standard 1080p YouTube video. We will leave it on default. Then we're going to set timeline frame rate to, let's say, 30 for this video. You can change it to whichever one you like. Then make sure that the playback frame rate is 30 as well, so it matches this. And then here, video monitoring, it should be the same format as the one you've set up here, so you can preview in real time what your video looks like. We can see that it's HD 1080p, 30, it's 30, and then it's 1080p. And so far, we're good to go. I'm gonna click on save. Now here at the bottom, we can see these seven tabs. If you right click on the empty area, you can show icons and labels if you want to see their names. We have Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight, Deliver. We're going to be covering each and every one of them, but we're going to put the most focus on the Edit tab because that's where most of the editing is happening. Now first, we're going to head to the Media. But before we go, I'm going to hide the labels so we have icons only. This gives us more room to work in. There are several different ways of importing your media inside the project. For example, you can do drag and drop, like you can take your files and just drag them into the program. Or you can simply right click and go to the import media. Now here I have four videos that I've prepared. I'm just going to import all of them. I'm going to select them and click on open. Now the program itself has recognized that these videos have higher frame rate than the project settings that we've created earlier. Now it's asking us if we would like to change the project settings on the higher frame rate. Let's say these videos are 60 frames per second and our project is 30. We can change it or if we do not want to, we'll just click on don't change, which is what I'm going to do now. And there we have it. These are our four files that we've imported. Now you can simply hover over to see what these videos are, if you would like to see it here in the viewer. But as far as the media tab goes, this is pretty much it. All we need to do here is import. Now of course, there are different things you can do here as well. For example, you can make the thumbnails larger or smaller. You can change the view to metadata view or thumbnail view, or list view, depends on how you find it suitable. Now the next tab is cut tab. We will not be staying on this tab as much, we will come back to it later, but this tab is primarily used when the projects are bigger, so this is where you can make these cuts to your videos. I will be coming back to this later, now we are going to proceed onto our edit tab, because that's where the most work will be done, as we can do the cutting there, because this project is not as large. I will make sure to navigate to the edit tab. We can see that we have two split viewers. Now this first viewer is our source viewer. For example, if I take, let's say, this bird mp4 and I place it inside, we can preview our mp4 file here. 
Now what does that mean? Let's say for example we want to insert this video particularly from some point here, let's say from this point. We will position ourselves here and press I on our keyboard and that's gonna put our first point here. And let's say for example we want to use only this portion of the video. So we're gonna press O on our keyboard and that's gonna put the out point here. Now if we simply come to our video here and then we left click and hold it, drag down into our timeline, we will see that the timeline is created. Now another video becomes visible on the right side of our screen, on the right viewer let's say. So here we're gonna see all the changes we make inside this timeline. Now let's say we want to insert another video, for example frog. But we don't want to insert any points or anything, we just want the whole video. We're just gonna select it and drag it down into our timeline. And we can see here we get the audio clip. So let's proceed and insert the third video as well, this grass place it there. Now we can simply scrub through this just to see these videos. You can see them on the right side. Now before I start working in anything I like to organize my interface a little bit. So let's go on to the top left side of the screen. Here we can see media pool. It's selected. This shows our media. We can simply uncheck it so we hide it. Now we get more space to work in. Also we don't need the source viewer anymore. We can simply hide this as well by going on the right side and clicking on this window. And once we've organized this space a little bit we can start working on our video. Now since none of these videos are giving me any audio waveforms. I'm gonna simply drag this back here. Let's say we don't need the full video. I'm gonna go back to our media pool and I'm gonna insert this test recording that has a audio waveform. It has some audio in it. And I'm gonna hide this again. Now here on the right side we can see we have this slider. This is to zoom in and zoom out our timeline. If there are things that we need to see, for example we need to cut some audio on the waveform and whatnot. Well this is a custom zoom. We can do a detailed zoom, it's gonna do it automatically for us. Or we can do the full extent zoom, where we can see all of our videos on the screen. There is a shortcut in doing this, you can hold down ALT on your keyboard and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out where your playhead is. If I'm scrolling up, I'm zooming in. If I'm scrolling down, I'm zooming out. This is very beneficial as you're working. You don't constantly have to go here and click these different buttons. Also, in the same manner, if I hold down control and I use mouse wheel, I can scroll down the timeline. For example, I'm holding control now and I'm scrolling down. You can see I'm moving through this. So this is very beneficial and can speed up your work, both of these. If you're zooming in, zooming out, scrolling left and right, you know, it can speed up your work to a certain extent. Now here on the left we can see this tool, this is called snapping. For example, if I take this video and I drag it here and I leave it, it's gonna stay there, right? Now if I move it to the left, we can see that it snaps automatically onto this video. This is what snapping does. Or as well, if I move my playhead, it's gonna do the same. It's gonna snap to this point where they are connecting. Now if you disable this, this is not going to happen. You can see you can freely scroll through these videos without it snapping ever. As well, if you move this, it's not gonna snap. You're gonna be turning this on and off depending on what type of videos you're working on. Now if we move all the way to the left, we can see this button right here. This is where we can customize our timeline even further. For example, if I click here, it's gonna show all the timelines. You can see here we have only one timeline open. We can create more and have different timelines depending on our projects. We can hide that if you don't want it. We can click here, this is the subtitle track that you can include. And you can click here, which is gonna show the audio waveforms. You can see if we hide it, we don't see them. This is up to your preference. So here, for example, video view options. You have the film strip view, a thumbnail view, and then you have the no thumbnail at all. Again, this is up to your preference. I like to have it on the film strip view and sometimes even on thumbnail, depending how many of the files I have here. And then we have the audio view options. You can make it however you like. For example, here to make it centered here, to put some black edge around our waveform. Now we here we can increase the track height for video and audio. For example here if you like it to be bigger or smaller or audio as well. I like to put the audio track 
higher because I can see more of what I need to work on. Now I will disable this just so you can see more. You can see how it adds that small black border around the waveform. Maybe if we zoom in, you're gonna see it more. Here, let's see like this. We're gonna deselect this, we're gonna zoom out again. Also, if you are holding the middle mouse button, which is your wheel, you can move to the left and right inside of this as well. You don't have to hold the control and scroll it. Now let's say we want to make cuts. First video, let's say we want to keep it as it is, as we already did it in the source viewer. Now we're gonna say, come to let's say this point, and then we want to cut this area. There are different ways of doing this. For example, we can go here and select the blade tool, and then we can simply come here on this area and click it. That way we can see we made a cut. And then we can continue doing this. Also what's good, we can press Ctrl B on our keyboard. For example, my playhead comes to this point and I want to cut it here. I'm just gonna hit Ctrl B on my keyboard and make a cut. If we want to remove this, we're gonna hit backspace on our keyboard and we're gonna delete it. Also, what you can do is press delete, but once you press delete, it's gonna move all of your videos to the right back to the one on the left. Here, I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna press Ctrl Z to undo the action. I'm gonna select this and press delete on my keyboard. You can see how everything bounces back. Now, let's say, for example, we want to remove audio on this clip, even though there is no any. As you can see, there is no waveform. And also, I don't know if you've noticed, but here we have sound disabled. If I click on this, the sound will be enabled and we will be able to hear anything that is played. For example, here, if I play this, we can see that there is no sound at all. So you can see, if I click on this, it's gonna select both the video and the audio. We can click on this button to disable the linked selection. Now, if I click here, you can see it only selects one of these two. But this is good to have enabled because you don't want to have your audio with video offset at any point. Now, if there are certain situations like this, you can simply right click and unlink clips, or you can hold down Alt and press only on the waveform. That way you select only one of them. And now you hit the backspace and it's gonna be deleted. Same for this one, you can simply hold down Alt, select, and then backspace, deleted. Now if we go further, we can see here we have some audio but we don't see the waveform. But let's play it. We can see that the audio here is not that loud, that's why we don't see the waveform. The way we can zoom in more on waveform, we will do that in the Fairlight later on, because the Fairlight tab is made specially for audio. Now I'm gonna go back here and mute the audio because we don't need it for now. Now let's say we want to add some text over this video. We're gonna go to Effects and then we're gonna go to Titles. Also, you can modify this as well. If you think this is a small space to have for this, you can always expand this like so, or expand this as well. You know, you can click here to shrink this area so your timeline goes all the way to the left. We're gonna select the basic text, basic title, and we're just gonna drag it over this area. Also, we're gonna hide the effects, we don't need them anymore. Here it says basic title. Now, how to edit this? We're gonna go to the top right and select inspector. This way we get this other window that's gonna allow us to edit this title. For example, we're gonna type here grass. We can change the font, you can put it on bold, change the color. Here you can play with the size. Also tracking the casual text editing tool. We can also double click here to put it back on default. Or you can press here to put it back on default. If we scroll down, you can see there are many things to be edited. You can add the drop shadow, the background. For example, if you add the height, we can see this is the rectangle around the text. You can always put that on default. Also, if you've edited something and then you don't need it on the other, you can disable it, enable it. You can play around with that here. Now, let's say we want to zoom out this text and then we want to position it or we want to create some small animation and whatnot. We can go here to settings and then we can see the transform option here. Now, if I go here and click on it and hold it, I can zoom in and zoom out if I want. We can see that this selection is linked, so they're gonna be moving proportionally. And here as well, we can move the position to the left or right. Let's say we want to position this on our lower third here. We're gonna zoom it out a little bit, maybe position it a bit more down. 
let's say we want to animate the text to come from the left side in. So let's say we will place the playhead here. This is where we want our animation to come. So we're going to place a keyframe here. We're going to move the playhead all the way to the first frame. And then we're going to move this all the way back here. And now if we play this, we're going to see how this text is coming in. There are many different options you can play around with here. There's pitch, yaw, but we will not double too much into this as these are the basics, right? So we're going to reset this, reset this, leave that small animation there, let it be. Now the next thing we're going to do is add a simple transition. Let's say we want to transition these two clips. I'm going to go back to effects and I'm going to go to video transitions. You can use the simple ones, like for example, the cross the soul. This is the default one. If you hover over this, you can see it's going to show us a preview of what it would look like if we keep hovering. But let's say we want some of these advanced fusion transitions. For example, we want to use the rotate 90 degree. You can see how it plays here. All we have to do is select it and place it here onto our second video. And now if we move the playhead back and we play it, we will see the transition. Now I'm going to hide the effects window here. And we're going to talk more about this viewer now. There are things you can do here as well. For example, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, you can simply just click on it anywhere. And then you can zoom in and zoom out on your mouse wheel. Simple as that. If you want to move it around, you can again press the mouse wheel and move it wherever you want. If you want to fit it back up, let's say from this position, you can press Z on your keyboard. What you can also do is you can click here and play with the percentages and you can fit it back up. Uh, the next thing we didn't speak about is the mixer here on top right. For example, I'm going to close the inspector and open up the mixer. Here we can see if I, for example, play this, we can see how, oh, we don't see anything because the audio is muted. We're going to unmute the audio, put the playback back. And now this is the recording that I did. And we can see that the audio levels are going up instantly. But this is a test recording for a tutorial on DaVinci Resolve. The most important thing here is that your levels should never hit zero or they shouldn't be in the red area. As long as they are in the yellow area and green, you are good to go. And as we saw displaying, it was around here all the time. If it does go up, you can simply lower the volume of the whole audio track here. Now you can simply double click this to put it back on default if you want. I'm going to mute this back and I'm going to disable the mixer. And now we are on our way to the Fusion tab. As I said in the beginning, we're not gonna dive deep into this tab because Fusion tab is mostly used for motion design and VFX. We're gonna simply see some basic things that we can do here and how it operates. Let's say we want to apply a simple transform to our media that is placed here. Here we can see a different set of tools. If you don't see this, you can navigate to Fusion and you can click on Show Toolbar. Now make sure that this media is selected and then we're gonna simply click on Transform. On the right side, we can see the transform is enabled and then we have different options to play with. For example, the same way we did with text. Let's say we want to make the size smaller. This way, we will place it like this. And then we want to move it to the right or to the left, up and down. Now, let's say I want to make this zoom in. I'm just going to double click this and reset it. Double click this and reset it. And let's say here in this player, we can see frames. These are frames instead of seconds. We know that in the project settings of this video, we've placed 30 frames per second. So on 30 frames, it's going to be one second. Let's say we want to make this zoom in real fast. I'm going to place, let's say, keyframe at uh, two seconds. That's 60 frames. I'm going to click here and put one frame on this size. If I move this playhead, we can see that one frame is created here. I go back to the beginning and then let's say I zoom this in as much as possible. If you cannot exceed the limit, you can simply type here, let's say 65. That way it's going to zoom it even more. I'm going to press space on my keyboard to play it. And that is the simple animation that we've created here. 
Now, as I said, this tab can be a whole different tutorial on its own, but this was just to get the gist of it. And we will be heading to the next tab, which is color tab. Now, the first thing we want to do is head over to the right side and click on the scopes. We can see the graph for RGB. Now I'm going to select some different clip because this one is uh, still wallpaper. Let's say we're going to edit the grass here that we have. We can move around, let's say here on this position. If we head over here to the left side, we can see we have color wheels. We have lift, gamma, gain, offset. Then here we have temperature, tint, we have contrast and all the others. For example, let's say you want to fine tune something. You can scroll over, over this wheel to make the gamma let's say higher you see how all of these colors are moving up and you can see up here in our preview how it looks like for example let's say you you put it a bit too much you want to reset it you can simply click here to reset gamma let's say you want to make this video look a bit warm we can increase the temperature here by holding the left click like so you can also play with contrast you can do the lift you can for example lift these purple tones can lower the green ones a little bit it all depends on what kind of feel you want to get you can also switch here to the bars and here you have the shadows mid-tone and highlights and as far as the basic color correction goes this should be enough for you to make your video that you're creating like properly colored so let's say for example we want to apply this same color to the other videos here for example here if i click on the frog we can see that this one is not colored like this one we can right click here and we can grab still now if we head over to the left side in gallery we can see that this still is created now what you can do is simply click on this video and drag this still on top of that video and it's gonna automatically paste it that's one way of doing things the second way is for example you click on the node here you press ctrl c on your keyboard to copy this and then you can select any of these and paste it also you can do multiple selection you can hold down ctrl and select both of these let's say for example and then press ctrl v on your keyboard now both of them will have this still applied how you can see that it's applied you can go to the split here split screen and then you can select here version versions and original now if you scrub this through you can see the difference between the clips if you want to undo the editing for example that you've created here on all of them you can simply click here and it's going to reset all that way you're back to the default one you can disable the split screen and the next tab we're going to be using is fairlight so this tab is specifically designed for audio editing. Now we can see we have our audio tracks here. Now we can expand this a little bit more, like so. We can use the same Alt and mouse wheel to zoom in, let's say, like so. We can move a bit to the right, like the same buttons that we used in the Edit tab. But now if I go here, for example, and I use Control alt and I scroll up, you can see how the waveform is getting bigger, but the audio is not increasing. This way we can look for the small breaks or mistakes that we made, and then we can cut them. Like for example, I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Now what I can do is disable the black borders around the waveform. If you want, you can go here and then we can disable it the same way we did it in the Edit tab, like so. I'm gonna click here. Now I'm gonna unmute the audio just so we can listen to it. And then I'm gonna go here, for example. This is a test recording for a tutorial on DaVinci Resolve. You can see this is what it sounds like. For example, this part, we don't need this part. You see, it's just a little bit of a noise, right? Now, if we position our mouse here, we can see that this turns into these arrows. So this is allowing us to adjust the volume of this audio track. If I click on it and I move it down, we can see we, we are decreasing the volume. And if we go up, we are increasing the volume. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. Now, what you can do here is hold Alt and we can see how it turns into this plus. We're going to press and then we're going to create a keyframe here. And then we're going to create another keyframe next to it. I'm still holding Alt this whole time. And then we're going to create two more keyframes at the end. Now you can simply drag this down to zero. That way you decrease the volume of this part. So now if we play this, she resolve. You can see that we've cut that part and now here again we hear the noise a little bit.
also what this is good for is you can lower your highs for example here we can see that this one is going a bit up above the others so we're gonna make the same keyframes like we did earlier i'm gonna create one here and one here and one here and then i'm gonna lower the volume of this just a tiny bit there we go so it's leveled and if we play it this is a test it's gonna sound the same as the other audio that we have here this way you can play around you can for example create one keyframe here and one keyframe here and then just lower it down if you have some noise coming in now also what we can do here is go to the effects window and then we can apply some noise reduction we're gonna simply drag it in place it here and then we can click on auto speech mode this way it will recognize our speech and remove all the background noises that we have like so and then i'm gonna move this window play it this is a test recording for a tutorial on davinci resolve we're gonna hit x here we're gonna minimize this as far as the basic sound editing goes this is enough everything that we've applied here is automatically changed in the other tab you can see here that we have all of these edited. Now we're off to our deliver tab. In this tab, we're gonna set our export settings. If you see here, we already have some presets. For example, we have YouTube 1080p. You can click on that and it's gonna automatically give us what we want to export. Here we will type file name. Let's say this is called tutorial. And then we're gonna select the location. I'm gonna set this, for example, to be, let's say at my uh, desktop gonna save here we can see that it's already 1920 by 1080 the output settings should always match your project settings and if we remember here we clicked and we set it for 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second i'm gonna close this format mp4 video codec we don't have to change anything else because this preset is already created for youtube also we can go to custom export if you want to change things on your own you can change a format if you want mp4 or maybe if you want quicktime quicktime will export in .mov you can change codec but this codec is the best for youtube now you can leave the encoder to auto we can see that our resolution is already set as we had it we can put the quality on automatic but we can also restrict it now here on the screen we can see the recommended video bitrates for uploads this is straight from the YouTube, so you can match their settings. I will make sure to place the link down in the description below. We can click here to go to audio. The codec is already set to AAC, that's good. And then data rate is 192. And again, here on the screen, we can see the recommended audio bit rates for uploads. But you can always go slightly above the recommended settings. And once we've set everything up, we can add to render queue. We can see here it says job one. We're just gonna click on render all. This way, our video will be rendered and ready to be uploaded. Now at the beginning, I said we're gonna go back to the Cut tab to see what we can do there. Now if I click here, we're gonna navigate to the Cut tab. Now you can see what I meant by if you have a bigger project file. For example, here we have the overview of all our tracks in this small portion. Now let's say we want to add more and more. Let's say we add one more here, then we add one more there, and then one more below. You can see if we keep adding, you see how it stacks up. Now imagine if you have 200s of these. This is where it's easier to edit. Also, you can go here to mute if you don't want to listen to the audio while you're scrubbing through the timeline. Now, for example, you can position your playhead wherever you want. You can click here to cut everything in line. Or if you select this track only, for example, and if you cut, it's gonna cut only that one, like for example here. You can see the one below is not cut. Now you can disable the snapping as well, like you did in the other tab. You can use the shortcuts like Control B, for example, to make cuts. If you play it, you can see that your playhead is moving along with the timeline. And then you can make cuts on the go. Like for example, right now you can keep pressing Control B and you see how many cuts we're making here. So this tab is basically better for you if you have a bigger project and you have a lot of cutting to do. It's all up to your personal preference. And that's it for this tab. 
Once you're finished, you can simply press Control S to save it and your project will be automatically saved inside your project manager. You can go here on this house icon. We can find it here. So every time you open the DaVinci, you're going to see this project manager and you can open any project that you want. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.